Hey y'all, I Rick Sky here, and I wanted to share my 2024 presidential debates thoughts. So let's just jump right into this. And before I continue, I encourage everyone comment below, share your opinions below with the world. But let's talk about the 2024 presidential debate. So these are my opinions. Now it's easy to become manipulated and not realize it if your mindset is person A versus person B and you're trying to find a way to attack that person's personality, the other person's personality, you're basing your opinions in your mind upon which candidate you feel is the better person. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut to the chase. Very few politicians are good people. So don't don't think that, oh, well, you know, I got to go for somebody because they seem like a really good guy, a really good gal. And that's the wrong mindset. So with the presidential debate, you've got this person attacking the other person, and it's just, it's, it's useless. So what I do, and looking at this guy, you're like, well, who the heck is this guy? I've never seen him on the news. Is he even credible? Never seen him. He's just a he's just a dumb hillbilly from the Appalachian Ocean. And if that's your opinion of me, that's perfectly acceptable because I don't care. What I'm going to do within this video is break down the 2024 presidential debate. So if you look at it from this perspective, and it's it's actually very simple. If you turn off the news, ignore social media and if you see it and you hear it that's fine but if you block it out of your mind and you focus upon numbers numbers speak louder than words and what I encourage you to do right now it's the year 2024 what I encourage you to do is uh, is audit you know, you probably use credit cards, you've probably got monthly bills, you've probably got a utility bill, a mortgage, or maybe you're paying rent. You've probably got a car payment. You probably got buy gas for that vehicle. You probably buy groceries. You may go out to eat every now and then, or you may go out to eat all the time. Who knows? But look at, compile your receipts from, let's say, 2018, 2019 calendar years. You may not have to do both years, but do one of those years and then compile your receipts for, let's say, last year, 2023, and look at the radical increase in cost of everything. And then ask yourself, okay, well, you know, what could have happened? Well, obviously, and, and I won't share my opinions regarding this, but there was that major event during the calendar year of 2020 and it disrupted things but recovery has to happen and if you look at this from a numbers perspective we're not talking about personality you know i could point fingers at every uh whether it's president or any sort of politician i could point fingers pointing fingers is not going to resolve any issue all it's going to do is stir continued conversations that become heated within social media, within the real world, when you're interacting with others. Opinions are, that's still relevant. Look at the numbers. And like I said earlier, you know, look at all your expenses for the year 2018. Compare those expenses to the year 2023. And ask yourself, okay, well, hmm, you know, what was different? Think about that when you're evaluating a potential presidential candidate. You know, look at the numbers, because I don't know about you, but what I like is to be able to enjoy things. And if I'm having a nickel and dime myself, now keep in mind, I run multiple business ventures, but even doing so, I am feeling the crunch hard core. And this has got to stop. And the only way for it to stop is to have someone in a position of power that understands 
business. You know, minimize cost, maximize profits. You need someone with business, they would say business acumen. Now this person may be a total jerk and that's fine because I don't care what personality type is in the position of power. What I care about is the year to year expenses. Like I said, 2018 versus 2023. Okay, well, 2023 is radically more expensive. What's changed? Okay, well, there's a different person in office. Not saying that's the, the sole root cause, but it can play a big part of it. And then you look at the individuals and their spending. Now, keep in mind, their spending, we being taxpayers, when they are spending, they are not spending. They're getting, they're entitled to X percentage of taxpayers' earnings. And depending upon how much someone makes, they get more. You know, someone that's that's a high earner, the government's going to get more money from them. There's things called tax brackets, and we're going to get into taxes within this video. But when the government is spending, the government is not spending. The government is taking more money from us, the taxpayers, and then they're loosely spending. And if you look at just the past few years, some of the things that, oh, well, we're, you know, you can comment below, you know what I'm talking about. But some of the things that the government was paying for, it's ridiculous. And the government was not paying for it, taxpayers were paying for it. And how do you think they're going to cover that financial burden? on top of everything else that the country's trying to recover from, taxpayers. So if you think that having someone in a position of power, the President of the United States of America, having someone in a position of power that thoughtlessly spends government's money, taxpayers' money, that is the, that's the problem. So whatever was vocalized during the presidential debates, you know, name calling and personality, person that candidate A attacking candidate B and vice versa. See, that's what the media wants you to see. That's what social media wants you to see. Conflict creates interest. And if you look at this from the perspective of, okay, well, what if there was a presidential debate and nobody talked about it? Nobody talked about it on the news. Nobody talked about it on social media. What value would the debate have had? None. Because the news agency, the social media sites, associated websites, whatever, they've got to generate what's called advertising revenue. And if it's something super boring, like let's say I posted a... Um, a very well made video about this grill brush. Yeah, it's going to get some views, but nowhere near the amount of views that a heated uh, video talking about candidate A versus candidate B is going to get because that's going to stir, that's going to create conflict. People are going to have different opinions and people are going to vocalize those opinions within the comment section. And in turn, they'll continue to return to that post because when people reply to them, they want to argue with the other person. It's back and forth, back and forth. But the end result is that that back and forth, back and forth is drawing more eyes and ears onto that particular post. So that's what the presidential debates are. There's people on this side of the fence. There's people on that side of the fence. And the sole purpose of the presidential debates is to fuel conflict fuel conversation and help to propel the news media outlets, traditional media, print, television, social media. See, when you look at it from that perspective, you realize what's going on. So it's easy to listen to this and say, well, you know, maybe you were listening to it in your car on the way in, to and from your job or whatever, and you developed an opinion. It's like, well, you know, candidate A is, is so much better because candidate B said something that was just so degrading. I can't believe that candidate B could say that about any individual. They're a horrible person. 
Therefore, I've got to vote for the other candidate. Don't let yourself become manipulated. Because if you base everything upon numbers, like I said, numbers, the year 2018 versus the year 2023, unless you have, and, and see people have sensed it, this, this, will, this will probably trigger some people, unless you have a mental condition that disallows you from wanting to spend less, most people are probably going to say, okay, well, it would be nice if cost of living was, let's just insert a percentage here, 40 or 50 percent less. It would be nice if we could get, if we could reduce cost of living starting this year by X percent, next year, bring it down X percent, X percent, decrease the cost of living, and also decrease the government's just in my opinion, uneducated spending. Because again, the government is not spending, it's the taxpayers. And whatever the government spends, they've got to pay for it, which means, well, probably taxes are probably going to increase. So see, all of this, it's easy to decipher the debates, and you don't even have to watch the debates. And let me tell you this, I intentionally did not watch the 2024 presidential debates debate i should say rather and the reason is is that there was no value add with me doing so i base all my opinions upon numbers yes call me a dumb ignorant hillbilly from the appalachian ocean and that's fine i don't care but i base my opinions upon numbers and if there's something that i can do you know i can okay i can say well you know prior to 2020 economy was in great shape I could go out over here on my grill. I could get me a ribeye steak. Not just a ribeye steak, but a thick ribeye steak that was delicious and truly affordable. None of this quote unquote quote affordable. No. It was truly affordable at that point in time. Words are meaningless. And politicians can try to paint whatever into being normal or acceptable. The reality is none of this today is acceptable. The cost of goods is excessively high. The cost of living is excessively high and it's got to stop. And whatever was vocalized during the 2024 presidential debate, who cares? It holds no weight. All that it's doing is triggering people within social media, traditional media, and even on the street. You know, maybe you're riding the subway and Somebody's over here and says, what do you think about Canada Today last night? Well, I didn't like Canada Today. I like Candidate B more. Well, how could you do that? Canada Today was, was so, uh, so condescending or whatever. See, those types of conversations, they shouldn't have to exist. My response, people start talking about politics. Hey, I'm a numbers guy. I want to reduce cost of living. I want to reduce government spending. In other words, I want to enjoy my life. I don't want to pay for an irresponsible party that's throwing money, taxpayers' money, at things that is just pointless. So focus upon don't even don't even worry about the debates and if pe the debate rather. And if people try to start a conversation with you about it, just shut it down. Just say, hey, I'm a numbers guy. Tell them what I just told you. Look at the year 2018, look at the year 2023, look at your spending, assuming you kept good records. If you use credit cards, all you gotta do is log into your credit card account and look at the date ranges. And it's easy to see, okay, well I spent, I spent uh, $4.30 for that two cheeseburger meal at a fast food place, but this year I'm spending $9.45 for smaller serving size, and that's even after a coupon code. So, I mean, just look at simple things like that. Utility bill, that's water, that's gas, that's electricity. It's easy to compare. The cost of goods, laundry detergent, soap, toilet paper. At least toilet paper, the price of that's corrected a little bit since 2020. But, I mean, what I'm saying is that the presidential debate means nothing. It's just candidate A trying to bash candidate B and vice versa and trying to stir up conflict so that it draws attention to the social media post, the news agencies, 
and then they can run advertisements and generate advertising revenue. Because <laughs> that's, that's, that's the goal of the news media and the social media. It's not to educate. It's not to, um, you know, be a source of good and accurate knowledge. It's to generate advertising revenue. It's a business. But we need someone that will treat the United States of America like a business. So if you have the news media trying to tank your opinion, you have social media trying to tank your opinion, you have people in real life trying to tank your opinion. Look back at those two years, just, okay, 2018, this was my cost of living, all things in. 2023, this is my cost of living, this has got to stop. Okay, well, how might it stop? Hmm, maybe if I go for the candidate that treats America like a business and understands business. Comment below, call me a dumb hillbilly from the Appalachian Ocean. Tell me how you know so much more about politics than I do. Don't say anything too offensive. I'm not easily offended. I care less what you say. And that's the other thing. See, today, the media, social media, the trend is that, oh, we got to be careful about how we say things or what we say because that person may be sensitive. Stick to the facts. Tell it how it is. There is no room for soft skin, especially in today's economy, because if everybody is soft about, soft about this, and if everybody accepted this, change would not occur. So it's time to stand up, stick to the facts, the numbers. This is not a personality contest. Stick to the numbers, get the candidate in office that will hopefully start to create a positive correction, price correction. That is what is needed. Opinions don't matter. And if your sole purpose in life is to have heated political debates with people you don't know online, with your friends in real life, whatever, I would encourage you to find different hobbies because it's not healthy. So like I said, these are my 2024 presidential debate opinions. I did not watch the presidential debate. I know exactly who I'm voting for. I know my goal is to get somebody in there that can, that can reduce the cost of living. All things that attribute to the increased cost of living. And then somebody in there that's not going to waste taxpayers' money. You know, all of this useless spending that the government spends. No, 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 no. We need somebody that treats America like a business. And hopefully, within a few years, I mean, as, as bad as things have gotten, this is not going to be, a, oh, well, we got the correct candidate in the office and things are fixed. No, this is going to take time, unfortunately. But at least by having the correct candidate in office that treats America like a business, hopefully that will expedite resolution of this problem so i hope you found this video to be uplifting and like i said comment below say whatever you want to say i do not care and most importantly do not forget to vote because this is a critical election year don't let the media don't let the social media sway your opinion stick to the facts stick to the numbers don't become one of these trolls online that just wants to talk politics and bash everybody else. Stick to the numbers. Go for the candidate that will hopefully reduce cost of living, reduce government spending, and let's make America happy again. Thanks for your viewership. Be sure to subscribe and ring that bell when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Irix Guy here. I hope you enjoyed this video and please be sure to subscribe to my channel and when you do, ring that bell icon to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.